Welcome to this retrospective slash review for the RPG Fantasy Star 2. And so I did a little bit of grinding with some new characters to get them some levels. So you'll see that running here in the background while I basically just give you my thoughts on the game. And uh, I did write them down so I could give myself a little bit of a map, <laughs> roadmap for my thoughts basically. So I hopefully can get everything in this video here. Don't forget anything. But let me just go ahead and start off with the positives for the game. Uh, basically, I will say that the the music and the sound effects were definitely obviously improved over the first game, which you would kind of expect, seeing as how you went from the more powerful from the weaker Master System to the more powerful Genesis for this game. Though, from a uh, development perspective. It wasn't a huge gap as far as years is concerned. It was fairly, at least fairly close to about the same time the, the first one. Or I would say like maybe within a year or two of the first game. So it's not like it had a huge development cycle before this game came out. And so, yes, the music and sound effects are definitely improved. But you can tell that's mostly due to the fact that the FM... Uh, chip and whatnot on the Genesis is just a much better sounding device and to be fair I did play with the original PSG sound on the first Fantasy Star so I'm not exactly sure what the FM sound chip version of Fantasy Star would have sounded like in comparison but definitely the Genesis version sounded much better than the base Master System version that we got for Fantasy Star 1. Uh, slightly better graphics and animations as compared to the first one so from an animation perspective one of the things that you got to see in this game is you got to see your characters attacking doing spells and things of that nature which is some that you didn't see in the first game um, you also got to see more than one type of enemy at a time they can't really think of any time where it's more than two types of enemies but the first game one of the things that it definitely did is you would only ever attack one type of creature and there would be a big stack of them. And so you would just see the singular enemy on the screen and then however many were there would be listed in the pane, basically. Uh, actually, I can't quite remember where on the screen they were listed, but basically that's how you would see everything. Um, this one you can actually see individual models for each uh, enemy that you're attacking. I don't want to say monster because it's not all monsters. There's other types of creatures in here as well. Um, but the animations on the enemies that you fight aren't necessarily that much better in this version as compared to the, the first Fantasy Star game. In fact, to a certain extent, there is a little bit of a step back from a graphical perspective in the fact that... <laughs> Just watching the, the thing go crazy there for a minute. Whatever. Uh, but anyway, like here's a good example. You see that you're just sitting here on a grid background. You see the enemies. Whereas in the first Fantasy Star, you actually got some environmental view. So it would be a different background depending like if you were in a dungeon. If you're in the countryside. And the countryside depending on like what type of... Uh, you know, environment you're in, you would get to see all of that on the um, in the in the uh, screen while you're basically, you know, uh, fighting them. So I, I do feel like it's, it's a bit of a step back graphically as far as that's concerned. But it, like I said, it, it made up a little bit by adding some animations for your characters and you know the improved sound effects. But that's really about the extent of a lot of my praise for the game at this point. Because um, <clears throat> it seems like this game, it took some of the worst aspects of the first Fantasy Star and doubled down and even tripled down on them. So I, I, I hate to be a little bit negative about it, but that's really the truth here. And... This game did really feel like a huge jump from an 8-bit console to a 16-bit console. It almost felt like a halfway point, like a like a 12-bit game as compared to a 16-bit um, game. That's just 
my own personal opinion, basically, as far as that's concerned. But, yeah, it's it's just not a huge upgrade. Now, my own personal history, when it came from going from an old console to a newer console, is like Final Fantasy. So the Final Fantasy we got in America, we did get Final Fantasy 1. And then when Final Fantasy 2 came out on the Super Nintendo, which was technically Final Fantasy 4, it was such a huge jump in quality from 1 to 2. And now, obviously, at the time, I didn't realize there were two other Final Fantasies released over in Japan that we never saw. But having said that, even if you went from Final Fantasy 3 to Final Fantasy 4, I still feel that the leap in technological improvements would be ba just massive, basically. And this just didn't really feel like a big, massive upgrade, all things considered. Very minimal upgrade, in my personal opinion. Now, I go ahead and just get this right out of the way right now. There is so much grinding in this game. Like, just a ton of grinding. Now, to be fair, I think part of it is that the two, the two main issues I have with this game is it's a lot more grinding and the dungeons are very confusing. Now, there may be a reason for the dungeons being as confusing as they were because if you were to sit there and figure out all the dungeon layouts, you would get all your grinding done at the same time. So it wouldn't be you know, like a lot of needless grinding sessions per se, but, you know, from a perspective of actually trying to complete the game and also trying to make videos for it as well, the, the dungeon layouts are just ultra confusing just to be confusing. It's like they would have like 50 teleporters or, you know, whatnot. That may, may not even be a big exaggeration, to be honest with you. And two-thirds of them don't even go anywhere important. So it, it's, it was just made to be confusing, overly confusing, and it just wasn't very fun from a dungeon layout perspective. Now, you know, I personally thought when I first started this, I was like, okay, this is just like any other RPG, turn-based one, where you have an overhead view for the dungeon. It be, won't be nearly as confusing as, you know, the the 3D dungeons of the first one, right? Well, no. <laughs> it was actually kind of worse. Now, to be fair, the, the guide I was following didn't really ha have, like, number one to number one, number two to number two, and, like, map out everything for you, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but also not a great thing either when you're trying to figure out where to go. But they did have a walkthrough that I was able to figure out by following to, to figure out where to go, but there's just so much of the dungeons that is just there as empty, wasted space. And I think that's probably to offset a lot of the grinding. But at the end of the day, there's just a ton more grinding needed in this game to get anything accomplished. And quite a bit more than the first game, to be fair. Um, there are twice as many characters in the game. You have eight characters as compared to four in the first game. And so you think, oh, that's a big improvement, right? Well, no, not really. Um, and I'll get into even more details about it, but basically you, you end up, should get like four characters that you focus on, and if you're just trying to play through the game, those four characters are all you care about. And with those four characters, it's just basically nothing else that you uh, really need to, to focus on for the other the other characters that you don't even use barely and I don't I don't know why this recording is going so nuts over there but whatever anyway um, but yeah it, there's no character interaction either that's the other main issue is like they don't talk to each other they don't build any relationships with each other of any sorts not even friendly relationships like just being friends it's just like they introduce themselves hey i want to join your party cool that's it <laughs> you know i mean there's no character for the characters if if you uh catch my meaning basically just there's just no 
personality, and it's just very dry. In fact, you know, if if you want to play this game and not follow like any of my playthroughs or anything, I don't want to spoil any of the surprise. But you know, there is one character that does pass away, and when they do pass away, I didn't feel anything because there was just why is this person important to me? It's just never explained. There's just there's no build up. But like with Final Fantasy 2, aka 4, um, the characters when they for whatever reason left the party or died or whatever, you had some sort of connection with those characters. And I didn't feel a connection with any of the characters in this game at all. Period. Um and and the other aspect for all these different characters that I think I should definitely focus on is l when you get halfway through the game, a little over halfway through the game, they just start swarming you with robot-style enemies or enemies that have damage resistance. And only one character really has any way of hurting them. And it's not the main character. <laughs> it's a... Uh, Rudolph, so with his with his laser guns, and he's the only one that has an ability to get through their damage resistance or whatever the heck it is that these robot enemies have. Yes, Kane can use his his uh, techniques to hurt the robot enemies, but it, it's it's like, and so many of the enemies are like this. I mean, Rolf with his sword can barely hurt them. Now, like you see these characters that I'm fighting right now, these are ones that you can actually do some damage to without having to have, you know, a laser beam, basically. But it's, it's just like, why are there so many creatures or enemies, robots, basically, that were just all over the place? From, like, start to finish, like when you hit that point of the game, it just gets ridiculous, and it's not really fun. And so that also ruins a lot of the characters. It's like, why even bother wasting time with these characters? Because they're not be able to do anything. They don't have any techniques. They don't have any weapons that can hurt these these uh, robots. So what's the point? So yeah, twice as many characters, but that's really what it boils down to at the end of the day, is what's the point of having twice as many characters? There really isn't one and once again let's talk about Kane the fact that he can actually hurt the robots and you know Rolf can with some of his techniques as well but there is still no item in this game to restore TP which I guess stands for tech points and not toilet paper but anyway <laughs> so there's no item to restore TP so you're not really incentivized to use techniques because you know you're going to blow through your TP in a matter of minutes. And then when you need those techniques later on, they won't be there. So, it, you know, it, it's the same thing for like mana in the Final Fantasy games. At least there were potions you could get, elixirs and whatnot, where you could restore your mana. And by doing so, you're encouraged to use your spells. There's no encouragement for that here because you know that once the TP is gone, you're going to have to basically go back to town and try to get it back. So it's a very it, it hurts a lot of the the the, uh, the play playability of the game. Basically, the only thing you can do is get potions to heal yourself. That's about it. Um, and so yeah, that, that's a lot of my biggest gripes. And like I said, that's that was a feature of the first Fantasy Star that carried over into the second one, and it's not a good feature, to say the least. Now, in my mind, I was sitting here flirting with the idea of giving it a slightly better score than the first Fantasy Star. And I think, at the end of the day, I'm going to give it the same score, 75%. Because it's just like, it took the worst aspects of the first game and just doubled down on them. And to, to a certain extent, it really wasn't that fun of a game. Storyline, 
it's there, but it's very average. So at the end of the day, it's just an average experience and there's better ones available. So, and that's the other thing is like for a 16 bit system, I am going to give it a little bit more criticism because I expect better from a 16 bit RPG. I didn't go quite as negative on the first Fantasy Star because yeah, it's an eight bit RPG. So I understand limitations of the system I don't feel like the limitations of the system were holding this game back. It was the game that was holding this game back. And so for that uh, for that reason, that's a, a good criticism for this game. And, I, and that's why I'm just going to say, yes, yeah, 75%. And there's one more thing I want to point out. The ending to the game. If you haven't seen the ending to this game, <laughs> it was disappointing. I, I When I... When I just saw it, I was like, really? That's it? I mean, and just to, to leave off on the note that it left off on was just, it was a bit of a letdown. And which was something that the first game didn't do. The first game actually had a nice resolution. Everything was resolved. Now, I, 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 I will say one thing real quick. I do like the fact that they kind of brought back one character from the first game and reintroduced him, even though this was a thousand years later. So that was kind of an interesting callback. But other than that, yeah, the, the game itself really should have been better than what it was. So at the end of the day, yeah, I think 75%, that's as high as I can give this game. Um, maybe worth a singular playthrough. And I'm probably going to put quite a few hours in this game doing a lot of grinding and trying to get the remaining achievements since I did play it through uh, retro achievements. Um, absolutely no reason at all to play this on the Steam collection. I mean, without those achievements, I, I don't think there's any reason I would have even wanted to play this game, to be honest with you. So, yeah, if you're going to play this, emulate it. I mean, I would still suggest you buy it via Steam or, you know, whatever platform you have available to you so that you can support them. But, yeah, I think playing it and getting achievements is really the only way that improves your experience with this game. So anyway, that's my thoughts on Fantasy Star 2. It's pretty much just an average RPG experience and one that should have been a lot better considering it was on better hardware now and to be fair a lot of early genesis games weren't really taking a lot of advantage of the hardware but they should have so those are my thoughts and uh yeah thank you very much for watching this video i'll see y'all the next one take care